Okay, this sermon is entitled, Declared Perfect. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 108 reads, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake psaltery and harp, I myself will, will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people, and I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. Now let's turn back to Psalm 39. In Psalm 39, we have a verse that refutes this bogus teaching called sinless perfectionism. Now, sinless perfectionism is about the stupidest teaching out there. Not only is it teaching a works-based or a lordship-based salvation, it's like jacked up on steroids. It's like the hyper-lordship or the hyper work salvation. It's this teaching that basically postulates that people can attain or achieve a state of perfection in their own flesh. They can somehow stop sinning and be perfect. Now, the problem with this teaching is that even the proponents, even these unsaved devils out there that are espousing this, they will admit that they used to sin. And, th- and of course, we have, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, they try to say that verse only applies in the past tense. Well, the problem is, is that if you used to sin, you can't be perfect either, because God looks upon your entire life. He's not looking at the point in time, the juncture of your life, when you stopped sinning and you tried to progressively or piecemeal become perfect. Perfect. God sees the, the whole picture in its entirety, and you're not perfect because of past sins. And see, the thing is, is that you're not perfect even in the future tense either, because nobody is without sin. And the, at best, all you can do is delude yourself into thinking, well, I don't sin anymore. And here's how you do this, by lowering the bar, lowering the standard, making it so low that pretty much nothing is a sin anymore. And that's exactly what these people are doing. They're trying to redefine and rename and recategorize sin. And that's all they're doing so that they can feel like they don't sin anymore. And see, it's a bunch of pride is what it is. And even thinking that you don't sin is a sin. So it's kind of like a catch-22. There's no way to reach perfection. But see, according to God, even if a person did reach perfection in a humanistic or a humanoid manner, it still would not be good enough. Because God's definition or God's you know brand of perfection is not human-made. Okay, it says in verse 5, it says, Behold, thou hast made my days as an hand breath, and mine, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity, see law. So we need to basically repudiate this false teaching of sinless perfectionism and understand that the Bible teaches that anyone who is saved is declared perfect. They're not perfect in, in their behavior, but they are declared perfect by God. And that's how God sees us as perfect, because Jesus Christ was perfect. And see, these people that teach sinless perfection, they're, go- they're going to hell anyway. So why would you want to have anything to do with that garbage? Because they're going to stand in front of God with their own righteousness, pretending to be perfect, and then God's going to basically just send them straight to hell because it's not good enough. You have to be God in order to be perfect, and nobody is God. Therefore, this... This stupid sinless perfectionism is not going to work. Because think about it. Sinless perfection is based on pride. And Satan is full of pride. That's what got Satan kicked out of heaven. So, believe it or not, sinless perfectionism is satanic. It's demonic. It's something Satan came up with to keep people lost. Okay, now let's take a look at a few verses that talk about perfection. And they're talking about Jesus Christ being perfect. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 5. It says in verse 9, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Okay, so Jesus Christ was made perfect. And that's why he is the one that gives us eternal life. He's the author of it. And obeying there does not mean acquiescing to some type of a law. It means to believe, to believe on Christ, to believe the gospel. Now jump back to chapter 4, and we see this concept again in verse 15. It says, For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. See, Jesus Christ was perfect. He never sinned. And that's why he was qualified to take upon himself our sins. And let's take a look at another verse that makes it very clear that he perfects us and has nothing to do with us. It has to do with the simple fact that he died on the cross for our sins. We see this concept in Hebrews chapter number 10. And look at verse 14. It says, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Now, that means that whenever he died on the cross, 
That's what makes us perfect positionally, and it's a declaration. Now, where does it say in God's word that he declares us perfect? Well, we see this in 1 John chapter 4. In 1 John chapter 4, it says in verse 17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Now, it's talking about Jesus Christ. As he is, he's perfect. And God says, so are we in this world. So anyone who is saved right now by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, no works, because human works would taint and vitiate God's grace, God says right here, we are perfect just like he is. And it's talking about people in the world now. Okay, So whenever we stand in front of God on Judgment Day, those who are saved are going to heaven because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's something we need to look at is the blood of Jesus Christ was perfect. And we see this concept in 1 Peter chapter 1. It says in verse 18, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. What he's saying is that the blood of Jesus Christ is perfect. It is without blemish. And those who are trusting in themselves, the sinless perfection garbage, it's like they're trusting in silver and gold. They're trusting in something vain. They're trusting in something that has no, no value. And that's why those people are on their way to hell right now. And those who are saved by grace, we're on our way to heaven because we are declared perfect. We're not perfect, but God sees us as perfect because Christ was perfect. And that's why the Bible talks about, comes to salvation, it's always what God has said. Okay, we need his righteousness. Okay, he declares us saved. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal eternal life. We know we have eternal life because God says it. Now, when it comes to any type of a work salvation, we have God's word declaring people unsaved. You say, well, how do we know that? Because the Bible says in Galatians 2.16, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So if you're trusting in your works, you can't be justified, you can't be saved, and you're going to hell. If you're trusting in Jesus Christ alone, you are saved, and you're going to heaven, and you're declared perfect by God himself. That's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says on this very important subject. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.